What is it that you have to do to organize yourself in a way where you can literally bring to reality what it is that you want to experience? We often tend to jump straight into this question without addressing some of the other things that go on. For example, this is a huge part of figuring out what it is that you want. But why are you unhappy? Why are people unhappy? We are normally unhappy because life is not going the way we think that it should go for us, right? We all want to experience a pleasurable, a pleasant life, a life that makes us happy according to our definition. So what makes you happy might not necessarily be my definition for what makes me happy, but so you're unhappy because life is not going the way that you think that it should happen in order for you to be happy, for you to experience a pleasant, pleasurable life by your terms. But let's talk about that right there. We're unhappy because life is not going the way we think that it should go. But what are you thinking about? Where do you focus your energy? Because where focus goes, that's where the energy begins to flow. So what are your thinking patterns? Because maybe life is going exactly the way you think that it should happen. You don't think you're worthy to have this love. You don't think you have the resources to go to school. You don't think you have the capacity to be a great businesswoman or businessman. You don't believe in your ability to be successful. You think that you're never going to lose your weight. You think that you're meant to be diabetic or have high blood pressure or high cholesterol because it runs in your family. You think that life is about the struggle and you work, 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 work and never achieve what it is that you want to achieve. You think that the entire world is against you for whatever reason. You think that everyone around you is giving you and bringing you bad energy. You think that you don't need anybody. You think that you can do things without having to be focused and committed and disciplined. Therefore, the result is not what you want it to be. So life is going exactly the way you think that it should happen. Exactly the way you think that it should happen. Just stop, pause. Or heartbreak, as me and my husband say. Think about that. If life has to happen the way you think or the way that you would like it to happen, it's time to honestly, and you're going to hear this everywhere because this is just what it is. It's what it is. It's what it is. It's what it is. Okay? How much energy and focus do you put into your thought? How much energy and focus do you put into your thought? What amount of enthusiasm do you put into your thought when it's a negative thought? All of these things are going to be incredibly important to your ability to make whatever you want to happen come into your reality. If the energy and the focus that you put into your thought is negativity, that's what's gonna happen. Not only do you have to worry about the thought that you think and then the energy that you put towards this thought, you also have to ask yourself, are my thoughts stable? While I'm in church, I'm praising and believing God and I'm having faith in God and I'm pursuing everything I want. But the minute I walk out of church, I go back into what I can't accomplish or what God can't do or woe is me or this is horrible or da, 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 da. So our faith was only good for that one to three hours or four hours you sat in church or every other time you step into the building. Or your faith is only good when you have certain moments or certain private moments in your home where you can meditate and you can really own in on what it is that you want to manifest or you're really into a place of gratitude. But then as soon as you get out of that secret place, you go right it back into your negative thought. Unstable thoughts. All of these things honestly determine if 
you are able, if you just have a vision and a wish, or if you can actually bring and you can manifest the things that you desire and live a pleasurable life by your definition. But the mind, that is so important. This goes across religions. This goes across beliefs. Your mind is a powerful thing to waste. Do you remember those commercials? It really is. Because your mind is one of the most important components to you being able to live outside of the box that people may want to put you into. Your mind is what you need to be able to do things that you never thought that you could do, but it's not necessarily an intellect. It's a belief. If you want to position yourself to be able to adjust your thought process that helps you live a pleasurable life, which in turn is going to make you happy because you're going to be living life according to what you think and how you think you should live life. The first thing we have to do is get our physical state in, get it together. Moving our body, fueling our body with nutrients, hydrating our body. These things together help to create an environment where we not only have mental clarity, but our organs are functioning at peak performance. We have the energy we need to wake up. We're able to rest when it's time to rest. When it's time to be creative in our mind, we have the freedom to do that because our body is well maintenance, well taken care of. You cannot tune up the mind without tuning up the body. Now watch how this all runs together. As a human body, because of how wonderfully we are made, we cannot achieve ultimate success without these systems being in line. So in order for our mind to have the capacity to be able to think and function in clarity, to be able to remove some of those negative emotions by the, 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 the hormones that get released when we move our body, we have to move our body. We have to hydrate our body. We have to properly fuel our body so that our mind can do what it needs to do. Now, in order for our emotional and our spiritual to fall in line and to believe what it is that we think and to stand on a little bit of faith or to stand on the belief that you can be happy and you can live the life that you want to live. Our mental has to be intact because the thoughts that run through our mind are so what the thoughts that run through our mind when we are undisciplined and we let our mind just wander affect our emotion which affect our faith. Now look, we're always trying to be reasonable and rational and be, live in reality. But there are some things in your life that don't require a reasonable thought process. It's not about falling in line with reality because everything that you're doing goes against reality because your reality may tell you that you cannot achieve these things or you cannot have these freedoms or you cannot live in this healthy state or this frame of mind. So sometimes focusing on what's reality is really what's detrimental to you even having the ability to live the life that you want to live. Sometimes it's about your ability to believe that you are more than the box that somebody puts you in. So if the environment of our body internally is unhealthy and unstable and undisciplined, our mind is unhealthy, unstable, and undisciplined. If our mind is like that, our faith our connection, our relationship with the divine is also a very bad environment. It's unstable, right? It's inconsistent because we literally have these internal warfares about what he can do or what it can do versus what it can't do, what we can experience versus what we can't experience. If you notice when you, when your body is unhealthy, your mind and your thought process is too. And how, how, 
How possible is it to be able to sit down and connect with your source, your divine source, when your mind is all over the place? Because I've been there. It's been hard to pray when my mind doesn't have clarity. I wander. I start thinking about all of what's possible and what's not. Side note, what is possible and what isn't possible has nothing to do with you. That is not your business to mind. That is the business of your higher power. Your business is to keep striving for what you want. And the more in line you get your physical, the more in line your mind becomes, the more in line your emotional and your spiritual becomes, and your desires begin to line up with the plan for your life. Everything we want a year ago is not necessarily what we want today and vice versa. But the more in line that you get with being in tune physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, the more your desires line up with your true nature. So your business is not to use your past experiences to determine what's possible and what's not possible. Your business is to keep striving. I know y'all already knew this. I'm just sharing my rendition of this, right? How I interpret it. But we know that in order for us to start living life a great life, we have to organize our physical, right? Organizing our physical help us, helps us to organize our mental. When our mental is organized and focused and in a good space, our emotional and our spiritual is also focused and in a good place. And when those three things are lined up, the energy that we project is pleasurable because we're in line from top to bottom. We've all experienced that energy. We get next to somebody and they make us feel a certain way. Or we get next to somebody and they make us feel a certain way. Or we avoid certain people because of how their energy drains us. Their conversation drains us. They never have anything good to say and it drains us. But this is what we have to remember. We attract. Paula Abdul, I'm not sure she was honest. Opposites don't attract likes attract it just looks a little different we just focus on the differences so we don't realize that we are actually attracting what we have so physical mental emotional spiritual and your energy you can create that you can create what unfolds in your life. And when you know the basis and the foundation for how to get there, what needs to be controlled, what needs to be reevaluated, and, and what needs to evolve within yourself, you're gonna be able to live the life that you desire to live. The things that you want are gonna show up. The people that you wanna be surrounded by will all of a sudden be the circle that you have in your life. The, the relationship that you wanna have with your spouse, with your kids, with your partner, it will show up. But first, we have to deal with this part of us so we can deal with this part of us so we can be who we want to be here and we can attract the things that we wanna attract on the outside. When these things fall in line, it gets a lot easier to write your vision for every part of your life. And when you can stick to your vision and you're not changing directions every two steps that you take, I'm gonna go here, then I'm gonna go there, and then I'm gonna do this, you can get to your destination intention. Now let me give you a little insight all of this didn't come to me when I decided to change and make some changes in my life. My change and my desire to live a good life and realizing that I can have it began in 1997. I was 16 years old and I finally realized that I can live a great life, that I don't have to be a, a victim of circumstance, but I can pay my way. And then it took until 1998 for me to actually be told that and for me to start making connections with what I want to experience spiritually. 
Then 2014, having the experience now of, of being exposed to new beliefs and new ways of thinking that made sense. Because now I've had life experience. Now I have a little insight. I've lived a little bit. I've adulted some. I've had to be independent. I've had to depend on a higher source. Then I started to move my body again. And you know, out of everything that I've gone through, the easiest thing for me to do was to move my body, to make sure that I'm drinking water, to make sure that I'm eating so that way I'm actually giving my body nutrients and I'm giving my body the life that it needs for it to be able to be lifelike, you know, like real, real vibrant and full of energy. I didn't want to be the walking dead, not at all. But focusing on the physical was one of the easier things. And then focusing on the physical gave me the energy and it gave me the clarity to really attack what was going on with my mind and in my belief system. And I'm still working on it every day. In conclusion, organize your whole system. You can't do one without the other. You need your physical, you need your mental, you need your emotional and your spiritual because that determines the energy around you. And when you have good people around you, even when you find yourself going through something, it's not the end of the world because they have enough love for you and they understand where you're at. So instead of them saying, oh, why you girl? Why you dude? It's always something that goes on with you. They say, okay, and you're going through it. Now let's get through it. Now let's stay focused. Here's my compassion, but here's my support and my inspiration as well. Because we can't stay right here. We got to move up out this place immediately. That's the And remember that your past does not decide what you can experience today in the present or in your future. Don't let your past stop you from being the man or woman that you have been called to be. And you know what you're called to be because it nudges at you. It makes you restless when you're not working on it. Do not allow your idea of what's impossible and what's possible to stop you from living with the expectation that you can create the life that you want to live when you have your systems in order. Go live.